The opinions expressed by the hosts of this video are those of the host or hosts and do not necessarily represent those of Pageant Live, Pageant Verte, or any of its affiliates or sponsors. The information being presented is not scientifically vetted or guaranteed to work for pageant competitors or to actually be an accurate story. It is the story of the person on the show in their own words telling their own story. Opinions expressed by the guests are only the guests and not Pageant Live, its affiliates, its sponsors, or the hosts of the show, and each person that speaks is responsible for their own words and their own actions. With that said, I'd like to welcome you to Pageant Verte. My name is Carly Rose, and I am the reigning national queen for today's American Woman Pageant System and part of K2. The other part of K2 is the incredible, handsome Kyle Hagerty. How you doing? Boy? What's happening, Carly? Hey, what's up? What have you been up to lately? Well, I'm still in D.C. I haven't gotten on a plane this week, but that's going to be happening soon. But I've been coaching all day today, so I've been cranking out beauty queens, what I always do. So real quick, we got a big show today. So I'm going to give my, my quick little shout outs real quick, and then we're going to go ahead and get this started. First of all, shout out to one of my favorite pageant moms. Her name is Linda Marks. She gave me this fierce bow tie. Carly, tell me it's fierce. I love your bow ties. Love Yes, them. thank you. Thank you, Linda. Love you. Smooches, all of that. Um, also, I am getting ready this weekend. It is the Baltimore auditions for the World Championships of the Performing Arts. So oh, if you are a or actress in the Baltimore area, come to the event. Okay, you can win over $130,000 in prizes. If you make it to the international level, it is fabulous. And Carly, of course, what should everybody buy? Your book. That's right. <laughs> Producing winners, your pathway to the ground. If you haven't got it, get it. So anyway, so those are my plugs for the day. What's going on in your world? I am just so excited to have this next guest with us. A big part of pageantry that is not spoke about very often, and as you know with pageant verite, verite meaning truth, we love to expose the behind the scenes, the stuff that maybe people don't talk about very much. And sometimes people get bullied. Our next guest had a situation within her pageant, well I'll let her tell the story, but where she ended up leaving not so happy with the experience. And so I'm so excited and honored to introduce to you author, speaker, and beauty queen, Amber Walter. Amber, take it away and tell them your story. Hi Carly, how are you? Hey girl. Um, so, have you always wanted to be a beauty queen? Did you start I, off as a little girl thinking that? Honestly, I never, I mean, who doesn't want to be a beauty queen, but I never actually thought I would have done a pageant ever until Halloween, honestly. So, so what happened Halloween to change your mind? Well, actually, I was watching a recorded DVR of a 2020 um, show, and it was, uh, it was a beauty pageant confidential. And it was a behind the scenes, and I was watching it with my boyfriend's two little girls, and they're uh, 10 and 9, and they were like, why don't you do that, Amber? And I was like, I don't know. I've never really thought about it. So I went online. I Googled Miss Arizona, and at the time, I didn't even know there was a difference between Miss Arizona and Miss Arizona USA. Like, I had no idea. So I found the website. I applied, and two weeks later, I got a phone call, and then... I was told the competition was November 30th, and I went Whoa. from there. <laughs> never done a pageant. Oh my never. gosh, you have a month to go. Abs never. I Googled, I, I watched YouTube videos. I, I mean, I literally had no idea what it was getting into. So, wow. Yeah. So they, you, what was your entry fee, if you don't mind me asking? The entry fee, um, once you were accepted, you had to put down, I think it was $700 to hold your title spot. And then the total was twelve hundred altogether. So then, once you, the day of, you had to have it all paid to get your opening number dress and whatnot. So it's twelve hundred dollars in fees. Yeah. Okay. So we talked a little bit about what happened after you got your fees paid. Do you want to go from there? Okay. Well, before I actually decided to go ahead and and compete in the pageant, I did get the the email that said I was accepted and the phone call. And I was a little bit on the fence because I wasn't sure if I was going to be in town um, that day of the pageant. And then the girl was the girl that was doing all the the calling, she was like, you know, you're an author, you have a different sort of background than some of these girls that can work to your favor. You're a new face, blah blah blah. Very, very, very nice. All of the emails. Very nice, and I was like, okay, you know, I, I figured out my, my schedule, and I signed up officially, and as soon as 
all of the money was paid. The next thing I knew, I was getting emails saying, uh, why haven't you been selling enough tickets to the gala, which was the charity event um, that Friday, the day before the pageant, and saying things like, you know, not necessarily to me, but we had a secret Facebook uh, page. Like, only the pageant girls are part of it. And the director would leave things, just comments like, you guys are so mean, you can't follow rules, mm -hmm. uh, you don't care about anybody but yourselves, this is for charity, what are you thinking, why haven't you sold wow. tickets? I just crazy things. Like, so the minute you're awarded your title, you are Miss Fountain Hills, Arizona, USA, you're in, yes. everything changed from then on. Everything did, yes, absolutely. And that should have been telling, and then I went to the uh, orientation, and that was also very interesting. It was, she, the pageant director actually had all of us stand up at one point during orientation, and she had the first, the, the teens, and then the misses, and for each group she was like, I want you to stare at each other. And she made us all stare at each other, and I think that's kind of where the animos animosity started, because she kind of instigated it. She's like, just think of what the girl next to you is going to be wearing, and look at her, the, the way you're going to look at her when she comes out in her gown, and I, it was just weird. It was uncomfortable and strange, and I don't know. Huh. Okay, so, so what did... Uh, you know, I, I was going to wait to ask a question, but let me just ask this now. <laughs> let me ask this now. So you all are standing there staring at each other. What was the motivation behind it? Was this allegedly some sort of self-confidence kind of thing, or was she trying to create the heat of competition? What do you feel the motivation was behind that? I feel like it could have maybe, not necessarily a, a confidence booster thing, but I think it was a little bit of getting it out of your system. She at least she made it sound that way. She's like, you're going to do this anyway, so get it out of your system now because she's like, you're very nice right now. It's orientation, but, you know, the minute, like I said, the minute you guys step out in your gowns uh, during the run-through or whatever it is, um, you're going to be giving each other the look. So she said, get it out of your system. Oh, but so kind of like you were gonna, you were going to be going, look at her hair. Uh, she wanted you to get that out of your system now. I think that's what the point was, but it, it honestly, at first I thought it was like a fun little joke thing like that, and then, but it wasn't, like, they were really staring at it. We were all staring at each other, and I'm like, what the hell did I sign up for? This is awkward. Oh, wow. Um, I, I don't know, so. So this I, is during orientation? Yes, that was during orientation, and also during orientation, the director posted a picture of one of the girls' brothers with a huge hickey on his neck on the board at the college we were at. And she's like, just so you know, I really believe in uh, social media. She said something like social media, like embarrassing people on social media. So she was like, I, I, I'm, I'm not even kidding. She went out of her way. She took like 10 minutes just to post this photo she had on her phone of this kid. I think he was probably 17, just to mock him in front of all of us. I don't know why. Do you think she was maybe trying to show you that as a beauty queen, you've got to be really careful about what you put out there? Maybe. I don't know. It was perhaps... But it made you uncomfortable. It made me uncomfortable. It seemed a little inappropriate. But I, I, was still, I was still like, whatever, this is a new thing. I'll go with it. Right. And I, I talked to a couple girls there. There was a girl in the Central Phoenix USA. She was really nice. Um, but that was about it. And then I met all the other girls the, the day before the pageant. So. so were they open and friendly to you? What was the... Um, I actually got along with a lot more of the teens than I did any of the other girls. And it was... I, I showed up. I had to get there by 9.30 to do photos and the opening number dress and check in. And it, it's, as soon as I walked there, it was, the, it was ballroom C, I believe, at the, the hotel, the Marriott. And... I just felt like, it just felt like vultures staring at me. It was ugh, bizarre, and nobody said hello. None of the girls that were there said hi to me. Um, as soon as I set my stuff down, I heard a comment like, oh my god, why does she have so many bags? Doesn't she know that all of our stuff is in here? And I literally only had a suitcase and a little duffel bag. And I'm like looking around like, are they talking about me? Right. And I mean, that's kind of, I don't know how I felt right away. I felt very insecure and leading up to this moment, I really didn't. I thought it was going to be
be fun experience, a new memory, if you will. And yes, just, I mean, I've seen your videos of when you were trying on your dresses. <laughs> you are, you're beyond confident in those videos. What do you think happened at the pageant that made that switch? Honestly, I, I, I still don't really know. I, I don't exactly know because it wasn't all of the girls. It wasn't the entire group. It was just a select few, and these few girls that were there when I got there, they were, they, they've been in it for years. They've been in the pageant uh, world for a long time, and I just feel like they looked at me like I was an intruder. Like, what is this girl doing? She's never done a pageant. This is the last year before she ages out. Um, who is she? Like, why is she? I, I just felt that way. And well, there's been, there's been a, some press, obviously, that um, specifically state that you were being bullied. Yeah. And so what the question that I have for you with that, and, and, and I ask this because, you know, I deal with hundreds of girls, you know, that do pageants. And so you putting your story out there and saying that you were bullied, I really would like them to hear the scenarios of how you felt that you were bullied. You know, in every pageant, you know, girls will look at each other or, you know, you'll have some girls that are really nice and some girls that are not. But to state that you were bullied, and believe me, I, I, I'm totally down with what you're saying. I just want to make sure that the young girls that are listening to this broadcast understands your story and what you mean by being bullied. So could you share that with us, please? Absolutely. Um, a quick little thing. I come from a very abusive childhood. That's what my books are about. I was physically, uh, mentally, sexually abused since I was four years old. And uh -huh. my entire life, I've, I've never really stood up for myself. I've never, I didn't speak out about it until like four years ago. Uh, I, I've just been very silenced and very shy and just very sort of a shell of a person. And I know people look at me on the outside and they think it's really hard to believe, but it's not. So when I went into this pageant and I just felt like this, 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 this vicious, like these girls were talking about me. They were talking about my dress. I was sitting in the dressing room when we were going through, like right the, the day of when we were going through the, the run through of the pageant. I've never done it before, but when we were doing that and the girls next to me were like, she's kind of pretty for like a bimbo Barbie. And her dress looks like it was from last season, la uh, prom sale from last season. And, you know, my dress wasn't very sparkly or expensive or anything like that. But it was, you know, I was proud of it. And, mm -hmm. and it just really, it just, it just resonated so deeply within me. Like, I felt like I went into the bathroom stall and I was, like, standing there and I'm, like, thinking, like, what the f what am I doing here? Like, I just went back to a really dark place. And I know it sounds so silly and superficial, like, who cares? No, it but it, it, mm -hmm. it, it really got to me. And mm -hmm. trying to be this person that's strong now, that's gotten over so many different things. I, you know, I go to different women's groups, and I talk about abuse, and I let that get to me again. And I just felt like, okay, I'm a fraud. How can I go talk to people about getting over things? And then I go do this, you know, this pageant, and I let these comments get to me. And so it just, uh, her, go ahead, Em. No, it just it, it, it just was the entire night. I didn't even compete for the two days. After the first night, I, I packed did my you, stuff. Did you do preliminary nights? So did you actually compete I, the first night in swimsuit and gown? And you, you quit after that, so you didn't do fine the next night. Is that okay? Did I what? Is that, is that what you... Yes. What I'm saying is that yes. so you competed in preliminaries, but you did not do finals, right? I just did preliminaries. I, I, that's all I did. So preliminary night, were they still speaking loudly like that around you? Yeah, it was... We did rehearsal that day for the pageant, and then that... I mean, it just... It, it went into that night, and I, I remember walking out on that stage before I had to go, and I was in the first group, and I just, I was shaking. I was like, I, I just, I don't want to be here. I'm like, my swimsuit doesn't have a rhinestone on it, or, you know, they were saying my dress looked like a prom dress from last season, and I looked like a bimbo, and I have fake boobs, and what am I doing? I mean, it was a gazillion things. Like, I... Well, in USA, don't a lot of the girls, Kyle, have... Enhancements? 
we'll get to that. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I watched, you have a video on Amber where we'll you opened a that. wine bottle, and I have to say, as a straight, straight, not lesbian girl, I watched the entire video because I was fascinated by how awesome your boobs are. So oh I'm God. wondering, as you're, <laughs> I'm wondering, were these girls maybe looking at you intimidated as hell, thinking she's going to kick our butt, we got to get her out of here? I don't, I don't know. I, I, I didn't get that. I, I have no idea. I'm, like I said, some people look at me and they don't think that I'm this way, but I'm a shy person. I'm still getting over a lot of damage that I had when I was a kid, and I mean, it lasted until I was 15 years old, and I think people tend to think I'm a certain way, and I'm not, and I'm quiet, so they think I'm stuck up, and I just mm -hmm. never get the chance to tell, to mm -hmm. let people see who I am, so. Yeah. Now, Amber, let me ask you, before I start getting in, into my questions, um, when this was going on, you competed in preliminary night, you decided not to compete in finals night, you left, you know, I watched your videos twice. You know, because I really wanted to get a flavor of what your what your situation is and how you were really feeling. So I really wanted to. I think you were owed that. Yeah. And um, what did the director of the pageant have to say? You know, based on the past you know 15, 20 minutes we've been talking, you know, I'm hearing some things that the director has said or done, whatever, making me raise an eyebrow a little bit. So I'm curious to know what did the director say? Did you go to them and tell them that you were bullied? You know, did you speak to the director before you left? I mean, what interaction did you have before your departure with the director? I didn't have any um, interaction with the director. I left, and um, I, my roommate was in. I my, I left when my roommate was in the shower. It was like ten o'clock. I left her a note. So she wouldn't think that anything was wrong, and I I was literally so upset. I was on the phone with my boyfriend, and I was like hysterical. I'm like, I, I'm not going to stay no matter what. And he's like, why don't you talk to people there? And I'm like, honestly, you know, I can't necessarily say how they would have responded to my complaints, if you will. But I don't think they would have been very forthcoming. I, it, it just, everybody there, including the director and her, her people running it, seemed to already seem like a clique, if you will. And I left. And I never even talked to the director after. Are you guys there? Yeah, because you hadn't oh. felt protected. I mean, once you'd paid your money and you were announced as a as Miss Fountain Hills, you kind of felt like you were dropped from then on, anyway, right? I did, so did. and and even ever, I even emailed the director. I still have the I had the emails and the text messages before I actually met anybody, and I asked her. I was like, "Do you know any places in town where I can get a dress? I have I'm clueless." Um, the pageant guy actually, you know, the pageantguy.com. He actually wrote me and he said, email Brit or email the director. She's very nice. She'll tell you nothing, not a single response. I, I mean, I was like, please help me. I don't know where to go. Nothing. So are there any are there any pageant coaches in Arizona that are that are good that could have helped you through this? I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are a ton, but it, like it, I, I didn't have a lot of time. My time was very limited before uh, you know the competition. From when I signed up and. I had less than a month, okay. and um, I've I've not still to this day spoken to the director about what happened or what went down. But I do see things she puts on Facebook, and even today she kept saying things like, "Oh, if only a liar's pants could actually catch on fire." And a lot of the oh, girls wow. that were really? a lot of the girls that were involved in my bullying, you know, people mm -hmm. want to say I wasn't bullied. They're like saying things like, oh, we know exactly who you're talking about. We won't be watching her tonight. And oh, my gosh. It's, yeah, and I can't even tell you the amount of hate emails, and there's a, a forum. If I Google my name, it, 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 it's a pageant forum, and there are people just tearing me apart because of what happened, saying, oh, she left because she's ugly and she knew she was going to lose. And then there's another website trashing me to the umph degree and saying things like I should die. Well, it's well Amber, Amber, let me say this. I've read them. And um, very disturbed in some things I was reading, as, as I'm sure you are disturbed. Absolutely. Go, go ahead. No, I'm absolutely. I, right. I even came home yesterday, and I was scared. The hateful things are so bad. I was terrified that someone hated me so much. Somebody might be in my house. I mean, okay. you if you read it, you know what I'm talking about. 
Amber, what I would like to do, what I would like to do is that, you know, obviously, like I was saying before, that a lot of young girls are going to be watching the show. And obviously, they're going to Google you, and these things are going to come up, okay? And so what I would like to do is to give you an opportunity to set the record straight. Are you willing to do that? I would, I would love to do that. Okay, well, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, one of the things that I read, you know, is obviously that you have posed for Playboy, okay? Yeah. With that being said, to a, you know, first of all, is that or is that not true? And then if it is true, please just share with us, you know, how you are a role model, even though you've done that, because I'm sure you would not want people to judge you based on you doing that kind of thing. Absolutely not. And that is true in a sense. When I was younger, I did audition for that magazine. And when you audition, they do take pictures. And being, I was naive, and I came from a very abusive background and maybe it was my mistake I was seeking some sort of affirmation if you will I okay. am not proud of what I did but you know what it was a mistake that I made and I learned from it and I am a role model because I'm somebody that came from something so devastating that there was a point in my life where I wanted to die I was 12 13 14 15 I want I begged God every day take me out of this please I just don't want to be here anymore and no what Go ahead, Amber. I'm sorry. No, I, I just, and today I'm lucky that I've been able to overcome that and be happy and be able mm -hmm. to love people. See, and I, for one, don't think you should be judged for posing for Playboy or any of those things because it's your body and you have the right to do with it as you choose. And I think, I think it's great to show young girls that we are proud of our bodies and mm -hmm. in any way you see fit. I don't think they should have judged you for that. Now, Amber, the next thing, the next thing that, and, and I agree with Carly on that, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you're your own person, you know, and you're a very strong woman, and you should do whatever you feel is right for you at the time. And the next thing Miss that USA Al that did a naked one anyway, Kyle? Didn't Miss <laughs> USA do a naked? Miss <laughs> Team, <laughs> Carrie, Prajee, Miss Team. USA. Moving forward. I'm just saying, they did, they did a naked that, thing. <laughs> that's a different show. Now, okay. I want to talk to you, um, um, I want to talk to you about this senator that you allegedly was dating when you were a teenager and him legally changing your name. Obviously, there are a couple of articles going on online about that. Could you please rage. share with us what's real, what's not, what's the truth, what's not with, it, with that whole thing? Uh, yes, I will try to do that in a, a timely fashion. Um, I, cool. my, first, my first book is called The Three-Year Lie. And when I was 11 years old, one of my friends, her father was a very mm, powerful man in the state of Arizona. He is not in office anymore. And I did have relations with him. And when I was 15 years old, his wife found out. And basically, long story short, she threatened to destroy his career, not to mention get uh, charges for you know, child molestation and rape and the worst things ever. And because of his political connections and his money and what have you, and the, the, the manner in which my parents were able to be bought, basically, for their silence, he did change my age from 15 to 18. And that is when I left high school. That is, I mean, every single thing was changed. And at, Is this where the Bentley came from, the car, the Bentley? That Bentley is not even mine. That's that was my that's my boyfriend's employee like one of his employees' cars. Okay. He was in Canada Understood. for a month. Again, one of the lies that's online is that you know through that whole ordeal that you know that you got paid off and you bought a Bentley. So I I don't own a Bentley. I drive a Chrysler 300. It's a 2008. I mean we love those. <laughs> we love Chrysler 300. It's, it's it's a big car, but I like it. You know, excellent, excellent, excellent. So from all of this and. and and, and again, I wanted you to have the opportunity to set the record straight because, as you know, there's a lot out there. And, and I feel that you were probably or you are being misrepresented. So I, I guess my final question to you is, now what? You know, from a pageant perspective, I mean, even though you're aging out of Miss USA, there are so many other things that you can do positively in the pageant arena. Do you plan on doing anything? Honestly, when I first left, I was like, no, I'm never going to put myself out there. I mean, I was 
it was it was the years of bad soundtracks going off in my head. Mm -hmm. But as I've even with every all the emails, the negativity, that other website that's been slamming me that I'm sure you know, it's the opposite mm -hmm. of the clean.com. That's sure. vicious, vicious. I'm like, I need to stop. But no, I would love to do a Mrs. someday or whatever else there is. I mean, I, I don't know a lot about the pageant world still, but I would I would love to do another one, be more prepared, um, know and, what I'm getting into. And who be the best guy in the world to prepare you? You, absolutely. <laughs> Kyle Agri. <laughs> of course, me. <laughs> Obviously. So, Amber, I've heard some speculation of that possibly you did this to write a book. Was this for, did you hope that maybe it wouldn't go so great so you could get some <laughs> oh things for the book? <laughs> okay, I mean, I know it. we would never imagine we'd want things to not go good, but it is better for a book if maybe they don't. Honestly, that's this is the first time that I've heard that one. I That's probably one of the funnier uh, rumors. Okay. Uh, no, absolutely not. I would never have made those silly videos of me doing the dance. I had my boyfriend's nine-year-old teach me that opening number dance. I mean, I invested a lot of, within a month, a lot of time. I wanted, mm -hmm. I 100% I was into it. I did not want a bad experience, no. I did it to have a good experience. I didn't get to do this when I was a little girl. I would have loved to, but I would have right. never thought I was going to. Amber, let me give you, can I give you a piece of pageant, pageant advice? Absolutely. OK. You never switch your shampoo <laughs> the day before pageant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you, you all who have not watched her video, I have no idea. She switched her shampoo the day before the pageant, and your color turn, your hair turned what? Three shades of white. It was like silver and white and gold. It oh, turned my low lights gold. Don't, don't ever do I, that. I know. I I went more blonde. I don't know why. My hairdresser was like, "You need like." like pow hair and I'm like okay I'll do it and then I was like at because I have my aesthetics license and I was at the hair store and I saw the purple shampoo and I'm like oh it'll brighten it up and I'm in the shower and I look down and my hair is gray and silver and it that was yes I made a video it was awful and it was Thanksgiving so nothing was open to get it fixed now when wow. we started advertising the show I started getting some emails about how fantastic your body is Oh man. So yeah. could you share with your body's amazing, for real, for real. Okay. Share with us what you do outside of the boob job, you know, and believe <laughs> Which is fabulous. I, I love a good I want I want I love some secret notes job, on that. Yeah. <laughs> but I, outside of the boob yeah. job, share with us what you do to stay fit. Well, thank you, first of all. Um I I do pure bar. It's it's uh I just discovered it probably four months ago and it involves uh, ballet bar. And it's isometric holds, and there's no running, no jumping. It just it fatigues your muscles, so that they have the biggest transformation. I I don't know how to explain it, but it it works. That's all I do. I don't do anything else, and I don't like fast food. I used to love it, and it's I never diet. I eat what I want, but I don't make it to where it's like a like a rule. Because I think when you trick yourself into just wanting these healthy things or not wanting the bad things, it just kind of you get used to it. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know. So if you can do anything differently, you know, you've had this experience, you know, you're really excited about it before you entered the pageant. Um, you went, it didn't turn out the way that you wanted it to be. You know, I'm, I'm a big proponent of taking personal responsibility for some things. And granted, I have some opinions about some of the things the director did. You know, I, I, I feel that a, a lot of it was inappropriate if what you're telling me is accurate. But um, what would you do differently? What's your, you know, what, what's your take from all of this? I would absolutely do, I, I would do things differently. I, I wouldn't have left. Um, I, you regret leaving? I kind of, I do, because I didn't get to finish, and I don't know how it would have turned out. I, I don't necessarily think that I would have won, because I'm not, Crazy. I mean, like I said, I did do it from memory. I, I swear to God, I did it for that. And I didn't. I don't know how it would have turned out. And I missed out on that second day. And I'm seeing pictures posted on Facebook of the other girls, that I, the ones that I did get close to, and you know the memories from that day. And I, yeah, I, I wish I would have had those. And I need still to. I, I still need to remember not to let things get to me. I'm an emotional creature, and I'm working on that. 
and I just need to learn how to take a deep breath, you know, reevaluate the situation, and probably think of it in a more positive way. And that's what I would have done differently because I I want that memory, but I don't have it. <laughs> Amber, the sister queens that were kind to you, have they stood by you? They have. No question. They absolutely have, and they've not defended me from Facebook, even though they're still friends with the ones that were not so nice, they're still friends with the director, they have absolutely, every time I post something, even I, I posted about this tonight, and they were like liking the photo, and you know, so absolutely. Well, I applaud and, those yeah. girls, whoever you are watching that has stood by her, I applaud you. One thing, Amber, that your story really brings up for me is, and I hope we get across with this show, is, you know, pageantry is a business, and when these directors or organizations accept your money, you become their customer. And it is their job to take care of you, to watch out for you, to make sure you are protected, to have enough, you know, have delegate liaisons. You know, if you if you have too many girls and you as a director can't take care of all of them, you need to have adequate liaisons that are in charge of each of these girls and make sure that they have a great experience because they are your customer. They paid you money to do this and they deserve to be taken care of. Don't you agree, Kyle? Um, yes, is this is this my cue to get on my Miss USA rant? You know, every week I pick a different rant. So is you go, this my Kyle. cue to do my USA rant? Okay, I get to do my USA rant. Thank you. First of all, I need all the girls out there who compete in the Miss USA pageant to understand something. Understand, it is a beauty pageant. Period. Understand it. Now you'll have these directors that say that you know who you are on the inside matter. Who you are on the inside does not matter until you get to the very end, okay? At the end of the day, it is what it is, and don't fool yourself. That's the biggest issue that I have with USA, is that when you look at the state level... I agree, you know, Kyle. I, I think we might have lost him for a second. I didn't hear you what? Are you there? Okay, yes. maybe, maybe it was me that froze. Oh. <laughs> I and thought you froze for a moment. I heard both of you. Okay, <laughs> fantastic. Keep going, the, 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 the biggest challenge that I have is that, you know, you go to these Miss USA State pageants, and there are hundreds of girls in this pageant, and 60% of them have no business there. Not because they're not beautiful or they don't have potential, but in many cases, you know, their money is taken and then they're not getting the proper information to be prepared. Amber, I think that's what happened to you. You know, you spent your $1,200 and no one really told you the type of gown you needed to get, you know, what your modeling is supposed to be, that, you know, what the interview is supposed to be and what the expectations are. They took your money, you went for a weekend with absolutely no support from the system. And that I have a problem with. Yes. Another thing with USA is that all state directors are not created equal. We have a director here in Virginia, in the Commonwealth of Virginia, and in Maryland, and in D.C. that are outstanding directors. Outstanding. They actually help the girl get ready and tell her what she needs to do and what's expected. She's not telling these girls to look at each other and stare at each other in the face to intimidate each other. That's craziness and that's madness. And I'll tell you one thing about the directors from my part of the world. They don't post crazy stuff online, I guess like the one that you're talking about. Now, so it's the inconsistency of that system that drives me insane. Okay, Carly, I'm done. Thank you. Well, now, you know, the, the, I've only been a... <laughs> go, Kyle. Go, Kyle. Okay. Well, well here's the thing. The thing you need to be proud of yourself for is you went, I mean, without any prior experience, most of the people that do pageants have done them for years before they ever take on a Miss America or a Miss USA. <laughs> I mean, here you, within a month, decide to enter one of the most competitive pageants in the world. Little and did I know. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, I'm, I also am sad that you didn't stay and finish it out and just see you know, what could happen, but I really, really hope that you give it another chance and that you do get back, well, you know, put that, put that crown back on and get your honey back out there and, you know, give it another shot. And Kyle. Amber, let me tell you, you, you're of the age where you can go to Miss United States, you can yes. go to Miss International. I mean, obviously, I will help you get there. As a guest of this show, you know, I, <laughs> hey. I will help you get there. And people who know to. me, you know, I, I produce winners. It's what I do for a living and I'm very good at it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you want to... I, I can so see you, that. <laughs> yeah, if you want to get there... Okay, well, I'll do another plug, Carly. www.weproducewinners.com But um, another thing, too, USA is the most competitive pageant out there. And the reason go why figure. it's competitive... 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, well, it's competitive because it's subjective. If Carly and I were on the same judges panel, what she may find beautiful and what I find beautiful may not be the same thing. You know, and, and heaven forbids that you can put a noun, a verb, and an adjective in the right order and answer the question at the end of the pageant. You know, heaven forbids, <laughs> you know, that you're able to do that. Yeah. You know, I, I had a girl win a pageant not too long ago who didn't quite answer it at the end, but she's beautiful, her body is good, her modeling is good, and they crowned her anyway. It happens. Well, did you watch the video about, speaking of messing up verbiage or whatnot, did you watch the one where people were tearing me apart for using the word acronym instead of metaphor? And yes, I was I, actually, I, yes. and that was, I was saying a thing that I heard at the pageant that I actually was like, I really like how this girl answered this question. And I was into it, and I was like, you know, it was the whole peach thing and how you could be the best, biggest, brightest peach in the world and you're still going to find somebody that hates peaches. And I was oh, like, sure. I love that. And I was like, I said acronym. And I'm like, as soon as I said, I knew it was wrong, but I'm like, whatever. And then every, so many people are like, you're an author. Uh, that's a metaphor, honey. Why don't you get an education? I'm well, like, you know, bottom line, if, if, you, if you weren't pretty with a really hot body and an author and speak well, no one would have nothing to say. Yeah. No. And that's one thing I'm glad you brought up, Amber, because it's really made me mad seeing the posts where they've insinuated that you are not a smart blonde. And that's just bull crap. Not regardless of the color of our hair, whether we're smart or not. How many of those people and that are giving you this shampoo. hassle? How about that? Right. But how many of these people that are hassling you have authored two books? I mean, I, give me a break. Just they need to shut up. Is what I. Think. Well, I don't know. Apparently, because one book they say is 138 pages on Kindle is. Lame. I, I don't know. It's. I, I have to stop looking. I have. I've had to disable the comments on YouTube. I will not look at that other website, which we know which one that is. I just. I can't. I. I have to. You really do, girl. You need to. You need to close all that off, and because that's what they want. They want your reaction. They want to see you post rants. They want to see you post videos. It gives them power. They're like feeding on the drama of it. I know. You're better know. than that. You're better than that. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Not, not a problem. Well, Carly, I think we've had a great show today. I think yes, our audience have. learned a whole lot. Amber, do you have any websites or any or connect? How do they get a hold of you? I do have a my official website is amberwalterbooks.com, and I'm on Twitter at amber underscore walter. And my books are actually Barnes and Noble. I just signed the papers. Um, they're going to be carrying my books. And yes, it's, good job. I know. Thank Fantastic. you. In Let the haters be the motivators, girl. <laughs> I like that. In six to eight weeks. And also Kindle and, uh, yeah. So um, these are my books. The kids want to see. Let's awesome. see it. Yes, it's For Your Lie and Let's Ingrid's see. Prison. And yeah. I expect my autograph copy, Amber. Yes, we do. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I, just message me the address. <laughs> Anything you want to leave them with, Amber? What do you um, want to look at the camera and tell them? I just want to say that no matter what people say about you or no matter what background you come from, you are anybody. If I can get into a beauty pageant and even though I didn't finish or win, the fact that I entered and was you know, part of that, you can do anything. Anything you put your mind to, anybody is good enough and don't let other people tell you differently. Amen. Got it. Kyle, what kind of shout outs do you want to put out there? Well, well before I shout out, um, Amber, do me a favor. Put up those books one more time for me because I really want our audience to see the cover so they can um, go out and get it when it gets to the bookstores. Okay. I think, I think those nice. are both. Are those both in the store or are they online? Uh, right now, these are online. Barnes and Nobles will carry them in six to eight weeks. That's awesome. So. Congratulations. And that's girl. me as a four year old. Oh. <laughs> see, and I don't think because you had the past you had, I don't think that you would have maybe felt some of the things you felt. You know, we are what we come from. And yep. I really want you to enter another one and I know Kyle's gonna help you with that. I would Absolutely. <laughs> and Amber, I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you the message that I give to every client and I close out the show with this all the time. Okay. That you should believe in yourself and to never ever give up on your dreams. That regardless of who you are, where you're from, there's there's always greatness and it begins with you. So I want you to remember that. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Amber, so much for being with us. We appreciate it so much. Thank Kyle you for and having Carly. me. Kyle and Carly are K2, and we are the hosts of Pageant Verite, Verite meaning truth. We want to hear your stories. Give us a, Write to us at 
pageantverite at gmail.com. You can follow us at Twitter, hashtag pageantverite. And you can find me on Facebook, Carly Rose, under the Curvy Times. Thank you so much for joining us. And Amber, thank you so much for having thank you. the you-know-whats to get out there and tell your story. <laughs> and like I said, let the haters be your motivators and keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good night, Good night everyone. <laughs>